hello and welcome to my youtube channel today in this video tutorial we will discuss about row level security uh, i will try to give you a simple description about what it is and also we will see how we can implement it uh, so i'll also show you a way you can try to practice this in your own lab environment so row level security enables us to use a group membership to control access to rows in the database table so as demonstrated in the picture so uh, a group membership is uh, we will be able to through the group membership we will be able to restrict access to uh, you know the rows in in a table so what exactly this is so the row level security simplifies the design and coding of security in your application so the access restriction logic is located in your database tier rather than away from the data in another application tier so you are basically separating the logic uh, from the application tier. So you're putting that in the database now. So as an example, you can ensure that workers uh, access only those data rows or data records that are pertinent to their particular department rather than accessing uh, all the records in, in, the, ta in the table. So uh, to implement this, uh, this was uh, this will be implemented using a create security policy. This is a T SQL statement uh, with the help of our predicates created as an inline table functions. So uh, this RLS supports two types of predicates. The filter predicates uh, is uh, are the ones which will actually filter the rows for read operations. So we will see this in action, of course, and the block predicates to explicitly uh, block the write operations. So uh, the labs, uh, lab practice setup, so this is what I have right now. Uh, uh, you know, you would need at least a SQL Server 2016 or a higher instance. So uh, I have a, a SQL file, so you can download it from my GitHub profile. So you just run the scripts in the same order as I explained to you in the video, so that you understand uh, how we can implement RLS. So let's see that in action now. So I opened up my VM, uh, right now as I said, uh, uh, instead of SQL Server 2016, I have 2019. Of course, like you know, the implementation is just the same as uh, in 2016 as well. So I already have downloaded the file, uh, so that I have it here. I just drop it down here. Okay. Now let's go through the scripts one after the other, and I'll try and explain uh, how uh, what's happening there. Okay. The first thing is. Uh, there is a drop statement, so I really do not have that database at the moment. So obviously, I will run the create database. So this is a sample database for this uh, RLS experiment. Okay, let's use it now. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create three tables, patients, employees, staff duties, of course, four tables, and wings. So there's a table for the patients and there are employees in a hospital and there's staff duties and also we have wings assigned to the staff so let's create these tables first so patients table is created employees is created staff duties is also created now wings is also created right now let's create uh, two roles uh, one role for nurse and another role for doctor and then we will grant permissions on the patient's table to these roles right so now we are going to create a user for a nurse and doctors. We are adding that into the employees table.
So once we complete this, we'll have a few employees listed in the employees table. So now this is some data that we are going to insert into the wings table. Some more inserts and this is for the patients table. So we are just putting some sample data into it and let us also put in some data for the staff duties. All right, I think we have our data ready. So let us look at uh, uh, what we have in the patients table. So there are some seven rows and as you see, there is a patient ID, a name of the patient, a room that he is in and the wing uh, that room belongs to, start and end times. So now let us try to look at the staff duties here. I did some joins on the employees table so that we can see the SQL username that uh, the name the employee is actually uh, using and the wing that they are assigned to. Okay, so this is just the uh, you know I'm just trying to show you uh, the sample data that we have entered so far. Now let's get into the the real one, real part of it. Now. To enable row level security as per Microsoft, they say that it is always a good practice to create a separate schema for these uh, security objects. So as per that, we create a schema called RLS. So as I mentioned in the beginning, so RLS is implemented using a filter predicates, so which are created as an inline table valued functions. So we are going to create a, a table valued function here. So, so this uh, this is like here. Actually, you see this. It will nurses only can see the patients who overlap with their wing assignments. So and the doctors can actually see every patient. So that is what this function that I, that's been written here. Okay. So let's just quickly go ahead and run it. Alright, so the filter predicate or the predicate function is created. Now we actually create a security policy and L, uh, and have that predicate uh, you know joined to the security policy here. So this is the secure create security policy here, and we are giving the policy name. And the, uh, here there are two types of predicates: filter predicate and block predicate. As I said earlier, this supports two types of predicates: filter and block. So the first part of it, the filter predicate, this one ensures that uh, only the rows that uh, the employees uh, have access to will be displayed and for other people it will the rows will not be displayed and the block predicate exactly does what it means. So it is actually blocking the right operations. So let us say if uh, a nurse is trying to update or delete or insert, uh, uh, sorry I mean uh, update or delete. Uh, any data that which she does not have access to, she will not be able to do it. So that is what basically a, pre, a block predicate does. So that is going to block the rights, right. So let us quickly run this and create the security policy. So that is we have the RLS enabled now, right. Okay, now let us see it in action. So here I have a select star from patients. As you saw earlier, we have some seven records and we are trying to run it as this user. So this user who is allocated to wing one and she will be able to see the patients only in that particular wing. And is the same. I mean, like you know, if you, I'm just trying to uh, do it with the different users so that we see the difference. So, this user has access to wings one, two, and three, and hence she is able to see little more data than the previous user.
this is another user who has access to wing 3 and the patients in the wing 3. So this is a doctor who should be able to see all the records as per the filter predicates that we have given in there. So these users are having the doctor role. So the doctor role is actually showing up all the data. All the data. So let's say for example if I try to execute as a DBA. So execute as DBA and let's try to because I'm already logged in as a database administrator with an SA login. So let me quickly see if I can select star from patients. Let's run it and see if I can see it. Right, so this is what exactly the filter predicate is doing. So you're really hiding the data uh, from the people who should not or whom you do not want uh, them to see, right? So, so if you want to include the database, uh, the DB admins here, so yeah, you can modify the filter predicate and so you should be able to do it, right? Now, uh, so far what we have seen is uh, we just saw only the filter part of it. So let's see how the blocking happens. So now we are looking at this user. So what I'm doing here is update patients set wing one where the patient ID is six. So this is, let's say a nurse, this particular user is running that. So this particular user, let's see what is her, what is the data that she can actually see. So she can see the patients with IDs one, two and five. And here she is trying to change you know, to her wing a patient ID who has a patient with an ID six. So let's see what happens here. Of course I put it there that nothing will be affected. So let's see it in action. Yeah, because obviously in the where clause patient ID six because it's already filtered and it doesn't see the patient ID 6. So that's the reason there are no rows to be updated. All right. So now look at another case where she is trying to, uh, so uh, we saw that she has access to patient ID 1. I mean, she does see uh, patient ID 1. Let us let me show it to you again. So patient ID 1 is allocated to wing 1, so which she can see. Now here what she is trying to do is she is actually trying to set or change that patient ID uh, 1 from wing 1 to wing 3. But uh, she is actually not accessed or privileged to uh, see the patients in wing 3 and she has been restricted. The block operations is that's what does it. So let's see if we if she can do it here. Yeah, so this is exactly what is expected. So she can only modify or update anything for the patients only that she can see it within her wing but she cannot do it for a, a different a wing according to the current logic that we have uh, showed here. All right, so now that's about uh, how you go about with say, uh, you know, so row level security and to monitor them. So you can just use this uh, DMVs, sys.securitypolicies and the security predicates. I hope this uh, video is uh, informative and if you do have any uh, questions or any feedback, uh, do let me know and you can always subscribe to my channel and I'll try and keep posting more useful technical videos which can be helpful. Thank you.